Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here we have the complex form of the Fourier series, which is represented as f of x, which is a periodic function, which is equal to the following Laurent series. So Laurent series are dealing with the negative degrees of our index of c sub n times e to the power i times n times x. And the coefficient c sub n is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi times the integral from negative pi to pi. So with that periodicity, the um, symmetric intervals of f of x times e to the negative i times n times x dx. So the complex form does actually have its advantages over the reals, mainly that differentiation and integration term by term is actually a lot easier when dealing with exponentials. So that's actually the reason why we have you know, such a form as this, but today's video is more of just a deprivation of why do we have a form like this, the series representation. So um, I'm not really gonna go too much about the Fourier transform, like the whole facts or key definitions. If you're wondering what it is for anybody new, Fourier series are basically these power series representations of a periodic functions that's mixed up by the sum of sine and cosine waves, trigonometric functions. Basically how we start off with this whole proof and why we have this form is we actually just take a normal definition of how you know typically a Fourier series representation is follow. And then we actually work our way from there by mainly of course with the imaginary U and I. So, there's going to be complex analysis involved with um, all those techniques, algebras, and well, calculus, because again, there's the integral <laughs> involved in this as well. So that's um, one thing to look forward to. So anyway, um, nothing more than needs to be said. So let's actually just jump right in. So by starting off by a normal representation of the Fourier series that says that this is a sub zero divided by two, and then we add this with our infinite sum. So this is just a normal infinite sum, not the Laurent series of from n is equal to one to infinity of a sub n and then cosine of n times x. Then we add this with b sub n times sine of n times x. And now usually when we're dealing with Fourier series, there's usually the period that's dealing with the general formula, but because this is dealing with pi to negative pi, so the pi is substituted and then we have a form as this. L equals pi, when you see this in the formula, that actually describes the half, half of the period of the function. So that's what's being used for over here. With this, now let's actually note that using some trigonometric identities for one in the complex form, the complex definition of cosine of x is, well, now rather we have an n times x, so cosine of n times x rather, is going to be represented as the following. And this is going to work the same, similar in a similar fashion just for sine of x as well. So we have that cosine of n of x, n times x is equal to e to the power i times n times x. Then add this with the same thing, except this is the negative, and then divide this by two. Naturally, sine of n times x is represented as the following. So this is e, then i times n times x, then subtract e to the negative i times n times x, and then divide it by two i. And then going forward we here, we can actually, let's just multiply the conjugate itself. That way, simply because if we're substituting things back in, we don't have to actually deal with two different sorts of denominators. So we can actually deal with something common. So we have two, so why don't we actually fix that up and multiply the, con um, the imaginary unit from both the numerator and denominator. So simplifying all this out, so this is just a continuation to sine of n times x. So multiply i to both the top and bottom, and then putting all this back together. So this is i to the power E, and then I'm just rearranging the terms as well, just for the sake of you know making things look a little more neater. So minus i times e to the i n x, and then this is divided by two. Okay, so with that, everything simplified, so now we can actually just plug that back into our f of x function. So f of x, so far we're gonna have, so a sub zero divided by two, and of course a sub zero, a sub n, and b sub n, those are just naturally the coefficients up for, you know, normal, for the normal Fourier series, but we're taking things a little bit more to a different approach because for one that we're only doing one coefficient for the complex form, so a little more and a more simplification that we're working around with. So putting all this back together, so we have plus and then our infinite sum, n is equal to one of now, this is gonna be a sub n and then substitute for the cosine of n times x. So this is e to the power i times n times x and then add this with same thing, it's the negative. Then we divide this by two. Then next we have the b sub n term, so plus b sub n. And then now just put this back in for the representation of the sine of n times x complex form over here, well, the simplified form over here. So now that naturally that'll give us i, then times e, then negative i times n times x, then subtract i, e, and then positive i times n times x, then we just divide this by two. And that's it for now. We can actually now distribute the a sub n and the b sub n terms over here. So 
with the spec. So A sub zero, that doesn't really change. Add this, then same thing, infinite sum over here. Then now putting the spec in, so if we distribute all the terms down. So we have A sub n, then E, I, n times X, then add this with A sub n, then the negative term, then all this being divided by two. Well, how about this? Let me actually separate this. So each, each of the term gets its own, <laughs> Each of the term gets a denominator. So divided by two, then divided by two, then, so that means I have to fix the plus over here as well. And now add this, so now distribute this back in. So I have i, then times b sub n, then e to the negative i times n times x, and then divided by two, then now subtract with i times b sub, times b sub n, then e to the power i times n times x, and then divided by two. We can actually now simplify, well rather we can actually factor out for each of the terms and um, group things a little bit differently because some of these terms actually share the same you know, factor for the e to the negative i times n times x and then for the positive as well. So after applying all that, so we'll now have the following infinite sum, well, and then add this with the a sub zero divided by two. So n actually splitting this up with using some linearity. So I have a sub n add this with i times b sub n and then divided by two. Then we multiply this with e to the negative i times n times x. Then now add this with, again, the infinite sum over here. Then now this is going to be a sub n. Then subtract i times b, times, um, b sub n and then divide it by 2. Then multiply with the power for the positive. So e to the power i times n times x. So now the next thing what I'm going to do is actually just going to interchange these two sums. So I'll actually put out the infinite, infinite sum here first n is equal to 1, so this will come first, so a sub n. So this kind of doesn't make sense on like why are we doing this, but you'll actually, you'll see what's coming ahead and it actually comes out very nicely. So that, and then now add this with a sub 0 divided by 2, and then now keep that for the same infinite sum over here, n is equal to 1, and then a sub n minus i times b sub n, and then divided by 2, multiply with e, and then i sub n times x. Okay, so you might be thinking, where are we actually going with this? We can actually do a little bit of indexing over here, because what you'll notice is that when I change this, we can actually deal with this with the negative degree, and that's actually very helpful to see that that's actually how we got the form of the Laroche series over here. So if we actually just change this index, so we're only just looking at this, um, these two are actually fine on its own. So what that comes down to is that everything will become negative. So rather, the first thing that starts over here is going to be negative infinity and then going up to negative 1. And also another thing is that the a sub 0 can also be written as the same thing as e to the power uh, 0 times i times x. That's the same thing as 1. And simply putting it this way because everything has the form of an e to the power i times n times x. So now putting all this back together, so we're going to have now this is the negative one and then n equals negative infinity of now. So you have to be careful on how you actually write your index on this. So what will happen is that this is a to the negative n, then add this with i times b to the negative n, then divided by two, then that will actually put down as e and n to the power of positive i times n times x. Then simply fixing this up for the a sub zero, as I said, this is the same thing as a sub zero, then times e to the power zero times i times x, and then divided by two. Then of course, just keep this the same for the positive over here, n is equal to one to infinity of a sub n, then minus i times b sub n, then divided by two, and then multiply with e to the power i times n times x. Okay, and what's nice is now, um, keeping things with these coefficients associated with the e to the i times n times x for, you know, the exponential or Euler's formula for n times x, we can actually introduce a constant. We're just going to call the c sub n just because we have that over here. And it's actually going to come down to three different values um, for the sake of, you know, naming notation and just keep everything together in a form of a Laurent series when we combine everything together. So we're going to have that for one a sub negative n, add this with i times b of um, sub negative n divided by 2, then we're going to have a sub 0 divided by 2, and then we're going to have a sub n minus i sub b sub n divided by 2 over here. And of course, this is for the condition that this is n strictly less than 0. Over here, the middle term n is going to equal 0, and then n over here is going to be great, strictly greater than 0. So now, after all this, if we combine everything together, so, so far we'll have that f of x is going to equal to the Laurent series. So from negative infinity to positive infinity of c sub n 
then multiply with e to the power n um, i times n times x. And so, so far, that actually gets us to just part one of the proof, just solving for the, or finding a nice um, complex form for the periodic function in the form of a Laurent series here. So we're actually not done yet because we need to find, um, we need to derive the C sub n coefficient in a way that we actually have it in terms of our f of x function. So with that, let's actually move on to that step. Okay, so everything so far that we just shown that for the f of x periodic function is equal to the following the line series over here. All that's left now is to find what that coefficient is exactly in a term for um, the f of x function since everything I introduced for the C of n constants are just in terms of the word sequences. Uh, those coefficients. So with that, that's actually not as bad because um, for one, we're actually going to start with our given, well, the given that we just shown our f of x to the Laurent series and then work our way from there. So starting with the given, so with our f of x, and then uh, I know I'm writing this again a second time, so this is um, infinite sum, well rather the negative infinity to positive infinity of c sub n and then e to the power i times n times x. Let's actually multiply a e to the power negative i times m times x where m is a positive well m is just an integer i almost said positive no but it's an integer so doing so we'll have that f of x is equal to e to the and then multiply with negative uh, e to the power negative i times m times x and so we do the same thing over here so that gives us e sub n and e to the i times n times x and then multiply with e to the negative i times m times x okay so next step, let's actually do some integration and let's actually integrate both sides from negative pi to positive pi. So negative pi and pi of f of x and e negative i times n times x dx and equals to same thing. Now dealing with the sum. So infinity n is equal negative infinity c sub n e i n x and e i um, negative e negative i times m times x and then dx. Now, from here, we can actually just interchange the sum and then the c sub n is just a coefficient and slash constant doesn't depend on x. So now we'll just put this outside. Infinity n equal negative infinity of c sub n and then the integral from negative pi to pi e i n x and then e times negative i m x then dx. Okay, so now our main concern is trying to calculate this integral over here. So let's actually do that. This is pretty just straightforward to see that for one that share, same, share the same base, so it's actually combined you know, with the exponents in a nice uh, rewritten form that we can write that as e and then multiply with um, to, the, to the power negative, well, just positive i and then n, n subtract m x dx. Then simply that's just if you just apply some um, u substitution and then all that, so we have following n minus m n times x and divided by i n minus m times x or rather no x that's that just that's just it then you evaluate from pi to negative pi but this is um not that difficult to show that this is actually going to equal zero however there's a condition this can only happen that's if n does not equal m so well what happens if the two variables are equal to each other so that means if that's the situation over here then that would actually have to mean that this is actually just a simple integral from negative pi to pi of just one times dx. And so x pi, negative pi. And so over here, of course, that's just actually just going to give us two pi simply. Okay. Um, so we have two different things over here. n does not equal m and then n equals m. So what can we conclude from this? So as the sum approaches um, starting from negative infinity and then goes to infinity, then that we'll have that it's going to equal m when n is equal to m and zero for the other n values. But however, we're going through the entire index for each one of those n's. So therefore, that actually has to mean that the following integral over here is saying that negative pi, pi, f of x and then e negative i times n times x dx we're dealing this with 2 pi the many times for um, c sub uh, c sub m when we're actually putting into that equality over here and so therefore that actually completes it just divide 2 pi to both sides and so therefore we actually found the derivation for the c sub m and actually because m is equal to n you can just replace that back for n 
So um, just skipping that one step ahead, then that means c sub n is equal to one divided by two pi, then multiplied with the in integral from negative pi to pi of f of x, and then e to the negative i times n times x dx, which therefore completes finding the coefficient in a nice close form for f of x, and therefore completes the entire deprivation proof for um, giving out the nice complex form of the Fourier series as we want to achieve. So there you have it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.